Anybody out there believe that God's going to make it better for you? You got to believe it. You got to believe it. Whoa. It's going to get better. Oh, yeah. Listen. gonna get better for you God's gonna see He's gonna see you through Hold on through your test It's gonna get better Better for you I know Better for you background scripture comes from Psalm number 9, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 16 through 22. The printed text is Psalm number 9, verses 1 through 12. And this morning our devotional reading will come from Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 17 through 21. At this time, I would like everyone to join me in the verse of Psalm. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I
on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die, until I die. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die. This more I'm reading to you from Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 17 through 21. For the Lord your God is God of gods, the Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and, ter and terrible which regardeth not persons, nor taking reward. He doeth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and love the stranger, and giving him food and raiment. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thou God, him shall, him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave and swear by his name. He is the he is thou praise, and he is thou God that have done for thee these great terrible things which thine eyes have seen. I read from Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17 through 21. Thank you. Let us pray. This morning, Father, we come to you with thanksgiving in our heart. We thank you, Father, for just touching us with a finger of love. We thank you, Father, for waking us up this morning and letting us see another day. We thank you for just being God and God all by yourself. Father God, we pray that you just touch our members this morning. Touch them, Father, let them lead them back to the church. Some of them got real comfortable with that staying at home, but I pray that you just lead them back to come hear a word from you live. I pray for our sick and our shut in. I pray for our bereaved family. I pray that you bless our services this morning from the Sunday school throughout the morning service. Bless the pastor as he brings the word. Bless everyone that's bowed with me in prayer. These blessings will be asked in your darling son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let your light shine, shine, shine. Let your light shine, shine, shine. It may be someone lost in the valley, trying to get home, trying to get home. Let your light shine, shine, shine. Let your life shine, shine, shine. It may be someone lost in the valley, trying to get home, trying to get home. I would like to thank everyone for participating in our opening services this morning. And at this time, we'd like to re welcome Rev. Connor back for our Sunday school lesson. Praise the Lord, everyone. Truly, indeed, God is good. Just giving thanks and praise to our Lord and Savior for allowing us to be here this morning. Have a great Sunday school lesson in store for us today. Um, i just like to say to everyone, just happy Sunday. Um, truly, today is a blessed and favorable day. But I don't say that um, only because today is my birthday, of course. Uh, the, the 25th anniversary of my 25th birthday that I'm celebrating. But it is truly a blessed day. And so I'm just happy that the Lord has allowed me to see another birthday. Um, so if you go online, you see my Facebook post. You know, I accept cash. I accept stocks, and, and, and I accept 2019 Ford F-150 accessories, of course. And so if, if you follow me on Facebook, you know, feel more than free to, to honor either one of those things that I have posted. Uh, but, but it's just a joyous day. Um, I also like to say, um, giving a shout out to my, um, I'm wearing my shirt today because I didn't get to wear it um, to the game Friday to my class of 1990. Um, I was looking at my son, he, he plays football also, so I had to stay home and watch my son play. 
but I like to say to the class of 1990, it was truly a blessing to see my classmates. Um, you know, after 31 years of being out of high school and seeing your classmates again, it's, it's definitely a joyous and thankful occasion that you can see those that are all alive and well and just to see how they're doing. Um, I know many of them, a few of them went to uh, my classmate J. Mar Jackson's church at Judah um, MB Church down in Lowell. Um, they was at, some of them was at the service this morning, so just like to say a blessing to his church and just giving thanks and praise to God for the, for the ministry work that he is doing. Um, had always been a gifted, gifted um, young man, you know, growing up in high school, and, and, and so it's just a blessing to see how the Lord has continually blessed him and, and, and being in the position that he is in of being a pastor. And so truly indeed it's all a blessing um, for us all this morning that God allowed us to wake to see another day. And so it's definitely a blessing as we look into this Sunday school lesson. It talks about praise God for justice and righteousness. Praise God for justice and righteousness. And so when we talk about praising God, we can come up with various reasons to give God praise. But, but one thing we need to look at, or two things we need to look at, is praising God for justice and righteousness. You know, there's a difference in God's justice and God's righteousness versus when we look at our injustice and our self-righteousness. And so that there's a big difference. And so as we look at this lesson this morning, just looking at the background a little, um, when we talk about Psalms um, concerning the authorship of Psalms, um, the subscriptions that are ascribed to 73 Psalms, and there were 73, 73 Psalms to David, um, 12 to Asaph, um, 10 to the sons of Korah, uh, 2 to Solomon, 1 to Heman, and 1 to Ethan, and 1 to Moses. And then 50 Psalms are anonymous. And so the, the Psalms, it, it had various authors um, when you look at the, the whole combination of Psalms. And so as you look at the background, Psalms were the soundtrack of David's life. And he left them for generations to come to laud over them um, for the greatness of God. And so this particular Psalm is not attributed to a, a specific event in David's life, but he uses it to lead the worship of the Most High God. And so David provides a tune, uh, a tune for this psalm uh, to be sung, and, and it was the death of the sun, and so which is believed to be a popular composition um, back, in, back in that day. Um, and so it was just a tune, um, like, like, like a tune that we would sing, uh, praise the Lord, everybody. Um, and so this psalm, um, as several other psalmists also do, do in 54 other songs throughout the book, is especially dedicated to the choir director. And so it is vitally important that we understand that music, it plays a role in the church. You know, it plays a role in the church. It is not the word of God, you know, um, I wouldn't go as far as saying, you know, to some, you know, they might say they, they might get their deliverance or what have you from, from music, you know. You still have to have a preacher. You still have to have a preacher. But music does play a role in ministry. And so it, it all culminates together. And so I ask you a question this morning. What songs do you sing to praise God's justice. What songs are you saying to praise God's justice? You know, one song that rings to my mind um, that, that I've loved listening to over the years is no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You know, no weapon. And, and when you think about God's justice, many a times people do us wrong and we want to get revenge on them. Justice is something that we can't issue out, but God can. Because God is going to do just by his people. 
God is going to take care of his people. Those that love and worship him, God is going to take care of his people. If you are a parent and, and you have a child, you cannot tell me that if someone does your child wrong, Deacon McKenzie, if someone comes slap your child upside the head, you can't tell me you ain't going to do nothing about it. <laughs> See, you will do something about it. You know, now me personally, I would say, don't try me because the Lord ain't through with me yet. So you can say, preacher, preacher, all you want to. Don't mess with my family. Because you will catch another side of me. And then I ain't saying that's going to be all godly either. And so what songs do you sing to praise God's justice? See, what songs do you sing? God has brought us all a mighty long way. And there should be a song in your heart that you sing to give praises to God for his justice. For all that he has done for you. And so our first point this morning that we're going to look at as, as we, we start into this lesson, uh, dealing with Psalms 9, verses 1 through 6, it is a reason to praise, a reason to praise. Psalms 9, 1 through 6, it says, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will shew forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. When mine enemies are turned back, they, they shall uh, fall and perish at thy presence. For thou hast maintained my right and, and, and my cause. Thou settest in thy throne, judging right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever and ever. O thy enemy, destructions are come to, to a perpetual end, and thou hast destroyed cities, their, their memorial is perished with them. The Psalms starts with, with a thanksgiving to God. The sincerity of the Psalmist's gratitude is expressed um, by the phrase, my whole heart my whole heart. It indicates that the praise comes from the depth of his being. The Lord would blame, and, and look at this, the Lord would blame some of his people for their lip service. Lip service. Honoring him with their tongue while their heart is far from him. The psalmist says that I will honor you with my whole heart. My whole heart. See, too often many of us, we just give God lip service. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. But then we, up, we uphold no principles. We uphold no commands. We uphold nothing that the Lord would have for us to do. See, it's easy to tell someone that you love them. But see, it's another thing to show them that you love them. See, some people say, put your money where your mouth is. See, put your love where your mouth is. You can easily say, I love you, Deacon McKenzie. That's one thing. But then what about when you in need? Oh, man, I, look, I'll pray for you. <laughs> now, I'm just going to be real. If I'm in need, for something, um, some food, Deacon McKenzie, some money, um, a ride somewhere. Well, brother, I don't need your prayer. <laughs> I need something tangible. I don't need your prayer. Your prayer ain't doing me no good right now. How about you help a brother out? <laughs> then you go pray that God will see me on through and, and make, for, make further make a way. But I need some help now. And see, the law will blame his people for lip service. See, honoring him with their tongue while their heart is far from him. Look at Isaiah 29, 13. It's written right there. So marvelous works is a reference to the extraordinary acts of Yahweh on behalf of his people, Israel. So look at what God did. 
He overthrew the army of Pharaoh. He parted the Red Sea. And these mighty actions and all the other actions that the Lord is doing on their behalf must be proclaimed. And fair you to do so is nothing other than what? Ungratefulness. Now, if we were to look at our time right now, what has the Lord done for you? See, he overthrew Pharaoh's army. Is there an army that the Lord has overthrown for you? He parted the Red Sea. Has God parted the Red Sea for you? And when you look at those mighty actions, when you look at the things that God has done for you in your life, isn't that something that you need to go proclaim? Because if you don't, it only shows that you're ungrateful. You know, my pastor, he said a thing a while ago, and he still says, you know, you can't beat God given, but you can try. But you ain't going to beat him now, just honestly. You ain't going to beat him. But then he says another thing. If someone does something for you, the least you can do is say thank you. That's the least you can do is say thank you. So all I'm saying is, if God has done something, has done something for you, the least you can do is say thank you. That's the least you can do. When you wake up in the morning, sit on the side of your bed, before you put your house shoes on or whatever, go to the restroom. You can at least tell the Lord, Lord, thank you for allowing me to wake to see another day. Because he didn't have to wake you up. Before you go to bed at night and throughout the day, you can at least tell the Lord, thank you. You know, how about you just start telling the Lord, thank you, before you go want to cuss that other person out? <laughs> how about that? You know, how about that? Lord, I thank you. <laughs> Lord, I thank you. That ain't how I used to be. I hope y'all see how I put that plug in there. <laughs> you know, so stop cussing them out. Just say, Lord, I thank you for, for how you, uh, I ain't like what I used to be, Lord. Lord, I thank you. And they're going to be looking at you like, what's wrong with you? I'm just thanking the Lord that I ain't how I used to be. Because I used to want to cuss you out. Well, you just cussed me out yesterday. That's why I'm thanking the Lord. I ain't how I used to be. Because <laughs> yesterday was yesterday. But today is a new day. I ain't going to cuss you out. So how about we do that? Just tell the Lord, thank you. And, and see, the Hebrew term for saying praise means to sing with accompaniment of instruments. So just like today's joyous worship, Israel used music, dancing, and playing of instruments in their worship. But we have some churches today, they don't want to do none of that. But this was all scripture. And so thy name, thy name stands for God's character and actions. His reputation among nations. What's your reputation among your community? See, the Lord's, thy name, it stands for something. Your name stands for something. See, back in the day, Deacon McKenzie, you know, we could do a handshake. And your word, it meant something. You know, the McKenzie name, it meant something. <laughs> you know, who are you? I'm McKenzie. Oh, oh, I know your folks. <laughs> your name means something. Your word means something. That handshake means something. And see, God's name, thy name, stands for God's character and actions. So if someone calls your name out today, what does your name stand for? See, what does your family name stand for? Character, actions. What does it stand for? And see, calling God most high depicts the universal rule of God. He's above all things and therefore above the enemies of the psalmist. And this is the reason for joy. See, when you calling God the most high, the most high, it means something. He's above your enemies. See, when your enemies are coming at you, lying on you, running you down, 
calling you everything in the book. God is above your enemies. And that is why, saints, don't worry about them sipping on all that haterade and all this stuff. God is above your enemies. See, the psalmist, he gives reasons for praising God in verse 3. The enemies of the psalmist, look at what they do in verse 3. When my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. The enemies must retreat at the presence of the Lord, which is a consuming fire for his enemies and the enemies of his people. They cannot stand the glorious presence for judgment. They reap according to their deeds. And see, that's why I say, you know, vengeance, vengeance is the Lord's. See, when God issues out his justice, and you look at his righteousness, your enemies cannot stand against God. Your enemies can't stand in the presence of God. Your enemies will reap according to their deeds. So just like I said earlier, if you're a parent, you got kids, you know somebody messes with your kids, brother Paul, you're going to go get them. Yeah. You might not physically touch them, but you're going to have some words with them. Now, if they laid hands on your child, oh, that's a different story. That, that's a different story over there. You know, you, you better be praying to God that I only speak to you. Because I'm going to be wanting to get a hold of you. Your enemies will reap according to their deeds. God would take care of it. And they can't stand in the presence of God. And that is what the psalmist was, was saying here. He was giving reasons to praise God. Because the enemies of, of the psalmist, they turn their backs in defeat after a confrontation. And so the enemies, they must retreat at the presence of the Lord. If you're getting in a fight, I remember back in the day, well, it didn't have me because I ain't had no big brother or big sister. I was big brother. But you could tell a, a, a you know, a kid back in the day, Deacon McKenzie, I see you at 3 o'clock. I catch you at the bus stop and we get off the bus. We was laughing about that at our class reunion <laughs> yesterday. We we walked through the memory walk through the school, so we saw where we used to get on the bus at. And we was like, boy, I remember them days, boy, you tell them, look, I see you at the bus stop. You wait till we get off the bus. You know, but back in the day, you could say stuff like that, yeah. and then you get off that bus, Brother Paul. Big brother, big sister, they standing behind them. What you going to do? We good. <laughs> yeah. You didn't want another big brother or big sister. <laughs> you talked all that noise, but now they got back up. And so all I'm saying is that's just like with God. When you step out in the fight and you come confront your enemies, see, God is standing behind you. And when your enemies see God, see, they can't stay in the presence. They got to turn their back and flee because they ain't going to go up against who? They're not going to go up against God. You might want to run up on me, but I guarantee you, you ain't going to want to run up on God. And so the verdict was, was, was in favor of the psalmist and against his enemies. And so when we look at this word right, when we look at this word right, uh, in verse 4 it says, For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou sittest in the throne judging right. And when we look at this word right, mishfat in the Hebrew, is the case lodged against the wicked. And the word cause in Hebrew, deen, means judgment. And so God is not only a judge, he's the king of kings who sits on his throne to do what? Judge the world. And so when you look at this past tense, um, in verse five, it says, thou hast rebuked the heathen, thou hast destroyed the wicked, Thou hast put out their name. Uh, in, in verse 5, it says, Thou hast put out their name forever and ever. 
O thy enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end, and thou hast destroyed the cities that memorial is perished with them. And so when you look at the when you look at those verses, the past tense is you past tense that's used here is called a prophetic perfect, which describes future events as if they had already occurred. And so the Hebrew word used for heathen designates people who were not Jews and who were also worshiping other gods. And so this prophetic perfect, it describes future events that were past tense. It's like it has already occurred. Thou has rebuked the heathen. Thou has destroyed the wicked. Thou has put out their name forever and ever. And so, to put out their name forever is a synonym of total annihilation. God put out their name forever. That's, you know, it's, it's like mortal combat. You know, total annihilation. And so the wicked, as well as their cities, were submitted to the same fate. They will no more be remembered. And see, that is why for us as Christians, when we have people that are against us, let me just put it like this. We have to learn as Christians, stop holding grudges. Put it in God's hands to take care of those people. And when God takes care of those people, we don't need to be sitting around holding grudges. Because if God is going to handle it, let God handle it. Put that, all I'm saying is, put that out your memory. Just let it go. Just let it go. Because too often, see, we just hold things for years to come. Years to come. We still holding on to it. Did you put it in the Lord's hand? And if you put it in the Lord's hand, you ain't got no reason to hold on to it. Let God deal with those people. So, to put out that name for every is a synonym of total annihilation. And see, this was the wicked as well as their cities were submitted to the same fate. They would no longer be remembered. Our se second session, uh, point here we're going to look at this morning is a reason to believe. So we looked at a reason to praise. Now we're going to look at a reason to believe in verses 7 through 12. And it says, but the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment, and he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thy Lord has not forsaken them that do what? That seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion, declaring among the people his doings. When he maketh the inquisition for blood, he remembereth them, he forgetteth not the cry of the humble. A reason to believe. God is the judge and king forever over the whole universe. This, saints, this, my friends, is a source of hope. So the knowledge of kingship, of God's kingship gives two prospects. The conviction that he rules differently from the nations and the assurance of the establishment of his righteousness on earth. When we have knowledge of God's kingship, it assures us of two things. The conviction that he rules differently from nations and the assurance of the establishment of his righteousness on earth. And so this word refuge is meskah, which means a high place, especially a, a secure height, like a high wall or fortress. So when we say, when you look at what it says here in scripture about refuge, the Lord also would be a refuge for the oppressed. It means that God would be a high place, a secure height, like a wall, like a fortress. See, 
when you're standing out in the open field and enemies coming at you shooting arrows, you have no protection. You're just standing there in the open field. But now think about it if you're standing there in that same field and you got walls of a fortress built up around you. So high that your enemies can't shoot at you. Man, you can sit there and get a suntan if you want to. You got protection. You can be at peace. You can be at ease. Because God has you protected. God has you surrounded. And so it is used in Psalms as a metaphor as God's protection. And the protection of the Lord is assured whether one faces individual oppressors or threatening circumstances in life. So regardless of what you face in life, regardless if you're facing people or regardless if you're facing a circumstance, you can be assured to know that God is protecting you. And see, and that is something that we all need to know today. Regardless of what you're coming up against, regardless of how people are talking about you, running you down, lying on you, you have to know, be in the right. <laughs> see, God is justice. God is righteousness. Only thing we have to do is do what? Stand still and know that thou is the Lord. God would take care of all that. See, I have learned over the years, and I didn't learn this just because, you know, the day my 50th birthday. No. When you go back and look over the years, and we can all do this, you can see how you have matured over time. You have to get to that place as a Christian. Don't sit here and worry about people lying on you and talking about you. You know, don't even worry about it. Because we can, spend, uh, we can spend so much valuable time that we could have doing something else, you know, than chasing folks down, dealing with lies. Because they said this, they said that. Man, you're just wasting your time. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that's going to happen is, you know, Sister Claire, you're going to run them down trying to straighten out this lie and try to go tell them off. And when you get done, they're going to go lie on you again. <laughs> so you just wasted your time. You know, and you just steady going to be running. They're going to go tell this lie, you're going to try to run that lie down. They gonna, then they're going to go tell a double lie, you're going to try to run them two lies down. Then it's going to be a triple, a quadruple, it's just going to keep going on and on and on and on and on. What I have learned here, just don't even waste your time. I'm going to see you in Walmart. I'm going to even see you in church. And I'm going to be like, hey, <laughs> you know, if you want to believe the lie, you believe the lie. If you want to know the truth, come ask me. You know, just, just come straight ask me. But if you want to believe a lie, let them lie. Because we have to trust and know that God is our refuge. God will protect us. And when we know and understand that, don't worry about your oppressors. Don't worry about circumstances in life. Don't worry about what folks are saying against you. Knowledge of the name of the Lord is an expression of what? Personal relationship established with him. Do you have a knowledge? And they that know that thy name will put their trust in thee. So for us that say we know the Lord, we got to put our trust in it. And knowledge of the name of the Lord is an expression of personal relationship that we have established with the Lord. So when you say you know the Lord, that means you say you got a relationship with the Lord. And if you have a relationship with the Lord, and they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thy Lord has not, verse 9, verse 10, forsaken them that seek him. God does not forsake those who seek him, but is ever present for them. You can call on me at 1 a.m. 
I might wake up and answer the phone. I might not wake up and answer the phone. Nine times out of ten, I ain't going to wake up and answer the phone. So you just that one percent that you might catch me wake up and answer that phone. You might not hear from me until eight o'clock next morning. Man, what were you calling me for last night? <laughs> but see, with God, God is ever present and God is always there. He does not forsake those who seek him. The psalmist, after praising the Lord for what he has done for him and acknowledging his righteous rule as a source of hope, for the oppressed. Now he calls on the people of God to join him in praising God. Zion is a poetic name for Jerusalem, which is called to be an earthly manifestation of God's heavenly rule. His doings and his marvelous deeds are the same. For his people of Israel, he sent plagues in Egypt. He delivered them mighty, mightily from the rule of the Pharaoh that was oppressing them. He parted the Red Sea. He conquered nations and led them to the promised land in fulfillment of his promise. He, God's rule over the nations is unchallenged. So God's people, therefore, must proclaim these mighty deeds to other nations. And just as then, we as Christians, we must also sing praises to our Lord Jesus, who delivered us from what? Put a question mark there. What did the Lord deliver you from? Do you have a reason to give him praise? What did he deliver you from? And see, the world, the world needs to hear that. What did God bring you out of? What did he set you free of? See, the world needs to hear that. You're dealing with individuals and peoples in our community. Let's not go to the United States. Let's just deal with right here in Amory, Mississippi. Right here in your community. You're dealing with people that are going through various things, whether it's drugs or whatever, et cetera, whatever. What are we doing as Christians, as members of St. Paul? As members of Rosa Shane, St. James, Victory Temple, Miracle Revival, whatever church, other churches in the community, what are we doing as Christians to show that we're giving honor, praise for what God has done for us, for what he has brought us out of? Are we telling anybody? And so as Christians, we must sing praises to Jesus for what he has delivered us from. We got to sing praises. Because we are serving a God that is worthy to be what? To be praised. And if somebody does something good for you, the least you can do is say, thank you. So if God has done something good for you, the least you can say is thank you. And then to go further, the least you can do is go tell somebody. Man, let me tell you what the Lord done for me yesterday. He woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. Well, brother, why are you so happy about that? Because, man, yesterday I wasn't feeling so good. I didn't think I was going to see today. Honestly, I didn't know if today was promised or not promised. But since I'm, I'm woke and I'm standing here before you, I just thank the Lord. And, and, and like I say, if that person is saying something to you and you want to cuss them out, just say, thank the Lord. Lord, I thank you. Man, what you thank the Lord for? Because I ain't like I used to be. Well, you just cussed me out yesterday. That's why I'm thanking the Lord, because I ain't like I used to be. That was yesterday, but today is a new day. Thank the Lord. <laughs> sure change. See, sure change. Because the tragedy is, is that people see us acting the same way we was acting before we said we got saved. They see us acting the same way. You know, even at my class reunion yesterday, 
all of us done changed. Hair done got longer. Hair done got shorter. Some thinner. Some widen out. <laughs> You've seen all kind of differences. We ain't the same as we was in high school. We was laughing about hairdos, Brother Poe, back in the day. Hairdos done changed. One of my classmates, I ain't going to call her name, but she ain't even recognize me. She pointed in the yearbook, where this guy at? And they pointed up, he right there. <laughs> she ain't even noticed who I was. I said, well, the only thing that changed you, I done got bald, I ain't got my goatee and stuff now. <laughs> I shaved by choice, but, you know, I'm, I still kind of look the same. But we all change. And with change should come some level of maturity. With change should come some level of Christian maturity that you act differently from what you used to. We all have a reason, saints, to give God praise. We all have a reason. And we must sing those praises and let people know what the Lord has delivered us from. So, to make inquisition for blood is to investigate bloodshed. Now look at this. David gives an example of this. He investigates those who shed innocent blood, a thing which the Lord hates. Proverbs 6, 17. So we can be sure that these people will suffer the just judgment of God's hands are uh, hands down to them and so when you look at what it says here in, in, in scripture those that put their trust in him sang praises uh, to the Lord and then in verse 12 it says when he maketh in inquisition for blood he remembereth them he forgetteth not the cry of the humble he investigates those who shed innocent blood, a thing which he hates. God knows the cause of the oppressed, here called the humble. And this word is used frequently throughout the Old Testament to refer to the poor and needy, the marginalized, as we would say today. He hears their cries and gives righteous judgment to them as well which will lift them up to flourishing. God will investigate those that have shed it, innocent blood. See, when you go to the court of law, when you call the police and, and some crime doesn't happen, you want them to come out and investigate. And you want that person that has committed that crime to be punished. That's God. God is going to investigate. God is going to take care of those that shed it, innocent blood. God would take care of his people, saints. He would take care of his people. Let me ask you a question. How can you use the word of God as your reason to believe in God's timing to dispense justice? How can you use the word of God as a reason to believe God's timing to dispense justice? See, some of us want microwave justice. We want right now. You hurt my feelings, I want God to get you right now. You ran me off the side of the road, I want God to get you right now. How many of us can be patient and wait? How many of us can be patient and wait? Can use the word of God to reassure us, to comfort us, and, and help us continue to believe that God would take care of it in his time. See, when people do things to us, we want to go cuss them out. We want to go get them right then and right there. We ain't waiting on nothing. God, I'm going to get them now. We need to wait and let the Lord handle it. See, sometimes you just, when, when people are lying on you and, and, and talking down to you and doing certain things to you, sometimes you just need to back off. Because Sister Ghost, my first instinct, it ain't Jesus. I'm just being real. It don't be Jesus. 
Because that old man is still up in there. See, don't be thinking just because I'm on the Lord's side that I ain't forgot how to cuss you out. I still know how to cuss. Now, some of us still cussing. But I still know how to cuss. And so sometimes my first inclination ain't to call on the name of the Lord. But you have to learn, you have to practice how to just say, hey, okay. <laughs> okay. Lord, I'm going to let you handle this one because I don't need to be saying nothing. And you have to work at that. Because years ago, I, it wasn't so easy for me. I had to come say something. You know, my wife can do some things right now. And, it, and she know it get on my nerves. Sometimes I just be itching, Sister Claire. Look, I want to say something. Woman. <laughs> but sometimes you just have to be like, okay, baby, just leave it alone. It just, and, and, and it would be funny because the Lord would deal with her, and then she will come back to me and say, baby, I'm sorry, you know, the, the Lord, he, he talked to me when I said that earlier. And I'd be like, thank you, Jesus, because, boy, if I had said what I wanted to say, I would have been sleeping on the couch tonight, you know, outside somewhere, because, so Clara, I would have said something. But sometimes you just had a, now, Brother Poe, now, when I do mess up, and I let it get to me too bad, and I say something, oh, I got a bad day then. Because then I'd be like, Lord, I should have listened to you when you told me to hush. And that's why as Christians, sometimes you have to back off and don't say nothing. Just be silent. And that's why you have to trust and depend on God that he will handle it. And you can just focus on his word and believe that in his timing, it'll be taken care of. It might be at that moment. It might be the next day. But whenever it is, let the Lord handle it. Sometimes we, we, we want to be so quick to say something when we need to be silent. So that's why I say, instead of cussing that person out, just say, thank you, Lord, that you ain't how you used to be, even if it was yesterday. So as we close this morning, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. That was the mantra of the Civil Rights Movement. To overcome is not a one-time event but an ongoing process of transformation to actualize, to actualize systematic and systematic change. Each generation must pick up the mantle to move forward to a just society, to move toward a just society. And so David used our texts and other psalms to remind the people of God's faithfulness, power, justice, and righteousness to keep them going in the times of opposition. He turns the people's attention to God's ability to deliver, for he sits on the throne and ministering justice to those who trust him. The call to action for this generation, the generation to come, is to, is to be God's hand and feet in fighting injustice for the long haul. See, when we look back at the civil rights movement, that was then. We still got to pick up that mantle and keep continually fight now. Because if you don't, the past can easily repeat itself. See, we have to continually to fight to make change. It's not a one-time thing. And that is what this lesson shows us. It's not a one-time thing. Continue to fight for justice. But what's most important here is to rely and trust on God. God will not forsake you. For those that seek after him, for those that have a relationship with him, seek after God and give God praise and thanks that thank God we ain't where we used to be. We ain't picking cotton. We ain't getting cracked with whips. But look at us now. God, I thank you. But my people, the struggle ain't over yet. You still have to fight. You still have to stand up for injustice because the truth of the matter is you still got some of them old heads in office that have that old mentality. So you still got to fight against that until they get out of office 
until those people pass on, but you still have to watch for the next generation because why? They just pass it down. So we have to go back to some of those old Negro spirituals. Teach this generation the struggle that we came from. Teach them how we overcame then and how we can overcome now. So we got to hand it down. We got to continue to teach. We got to continue to keep up the fight against injustice. So our next lesson next Sunday will be give thanks for deliverance. Give thanks for deliverance. Bible background will be coming from Psalms 107. Printed text 107 verses 1 through 9 and 39 through 43. And our devotional reading becomes from Psalm 68, 1 through 6. And so our aim for change next Sunday will be we will explore the importance of having a relationship with God, the deliverer, place value on the role of giving thanks to God, and pray for those who need God's deliverance. May God bless you, may God keep you, and I pray you got something wonderful out like this lesson this morning. I'd like to thank Ram Connor for that wonderful lesson. Pray that you take that lesson and apply it to your daily life. Also, I would like to wish him a happy birthday on today. Um, also, uh, you don't have to stay at home anymore. I pray that you come out and join us live, even though we're going to continue to have the services where you can enjoy the Sunday school lesson live. But we would love to see your face. Uh, I'm seeing your face everywhere in restaurants, Walmart, everywhere. I like to see your face in church. So I pray that you come out and uh, join us live some Sundays now. But if you decide to stay at home, may God continue to bless each and every one of you. Have a wonderful day.